Coming up on this month's RC Racing, we have more exclusive coverage of the Neo Invitational event, a chat with Electric World Champion Neil Cragg, and a look at Rallycross's top team, the two Johns, Hazelwood and Dell. We also have an Electric Motor Masterclass from Team Orion's legend, Oscar Janssen. But first, a look at the monster beetle that's not terrorising Tokyo with Godzilla, but ripping up the rough stuff at a hobby shop near you. Electric power is the easy way to get into off-road monster trucks. Charge up, switch on, and enjoy the ride. The Ezilla is that truck. Monster trucks are all about performance, and the Ezilla has it in spades. Two high-power 550 size motors come pre-installed, and these are powered by twin high-output 7.2 volt batteries, giving the Ezilla the power you need for off-road action and wheelies on command. Two shocks at each corner and long suspension arms provide the bump soaking action you need in something like this and let the Ezilla tackle anything you throw at it. Full time four wheel drive allows this machine to power over and through any obstacle. The ground-hugging performance, the super low centre of gravity from the low-mounted dual batteries keeps the Ezilla stuck to the ground. The layout of the Ezilla ensures it is simple to maintain, making upkeep easy and painless. Ezilla is all about attitude. It captures the proven durability and extreme off-road capabilities of the famous line of Hot Bodies trucks. You need a tough and powerful truck to handle electric off-roading and the Ezilla delivers. Now for an RC Racing exclusive. Team Orion's main man, Oscar Janssen, shows how he rebuilds the modified motors that powered the world champion. So this is a, a motor that has just been used. Uh, you see the commutator, there's a little spots here. And this just need to be cut to, to get in perfect condition again. The first thing I normally do is I clean the splits in between. A little bit, because sometimes there's some hard carbon fiber, which you need to remove. Then you take the motor spray to clean it a little bit and make it a bit wet before you start the cutting. Then we of course use the, the commutator cutter to make sure everything looks nice. I rather prefer a very low uh, RPM uh, to avoid vibrations of the O-ring on the armature. Then you try to get as close as possible to the commutator until it just slightly hits like it does now and I increase by a little a little turn and try to slowly go to the left and turn to the right then you will see that the commutator is now actually clean it has got just a little cut and this cut is actually enough uh, that the armature, you can cut it about 75 times. So, I just clean it with a knife. You can do it with a piece of paper also, it doesn't really matter. Take the O-ring off, take the motor spray again, clean it a little bit. It will dry automatically, so that is not a problem. Looking if the armature is still in good condition, it means is the commutator nice cut, are the wires still okay, are everything fitted, is, is Nothing strange to detect. You do the same with the motor inside. Did it pick up some, met some metals or 
how does it look? You check for the bearing. This one is fine. You check at the same time this one. Runs great. So still always check if there's no shims inside. Click it in. It's easy. Then we go for the brushes. Normally the only thing you have to do with the V2 is skim, is skim the commutator. But there's not a lot of people know how to work with the brushes. I would like to show what is are actually the tricks. So the first thing you need to do is make the wire straight. This is very important because the wire has to go through the spring and come out here. So with, of course with a bent wire you can do what you want, but <laughs> it's, it, it, will be, it will still go through, but it, it can lead into some little troubles. So you just put it through straight. And you guide with the top of your finger and while you push here, you guide just the brush in. You see it goes very easy. You just pull it slightly till the top and while you hold the pressure, you make a turn like this and the brush is hold inside. You do the same for the, other, for the other side. So I first pull the wire straight, put it in. Guide, because the guiding is to make sure it runs smoothly, it goes smoothly into the tube. Pull it up completely, make the turn again, and it's done. Then you check if all the shims are correct on. For this motor we need only one shim. You put it on, close it together. Very important to look before you open it is to make a small stripe on the can as an identification where the timing was from before. You put the motor can back in the position, which means there was already a cut here. It just has to arrive in the same position and that's it. You take the screwdriver and you touch it just hand tight, not over, over tighten it. The same one for here. So not con try to continue, just tight is enough. You pull this back, you pull this back again, you just click it twice and the job is done. And you take the solder, put the wire in the correct position, you do it for both sides. And I actually advise, in regards to soldering, use a very good tip, which is really hot, and take just simply a knife. With that knife, so you apply a bit of solder on the motor, like this, you take the knife, and with that you hold the wire in position. The knife avoids the solder going into the wire because the heat is going into the tip of the knife. So with this you always, if you're not really a professional solderer, you make sure that the brush wire will not get too hard. And you do the same for the other position. So a little bit of solder on. You take the knife again. You hold with the knife. You just wait together with the knife till the solder melts. You hold the knife on, the heat goes in the knife, and the job is done. Whenever I'm at home, I like to relive the best moments of RC racing, and now you can too, because all the episodes are archived on our website, rcracing.tv, available on any computer near you. Simply type in www.rcracing.tv where you'll find both the times for the programs coming up, what's on the next episode, and archives of all the previous episodes for you to either download or watch online. Lord, it's over. That's a that's gone over. So now, there's no excuse to miss those fine moments from the World Championships, the new Invitational, and even me making a complete fool of myself driving a truggy, because they're all on rcracing.tv. We're back at the Neo Invitational meeting held at the Harper Adams College in Telford, England. In a moment, a look at the unique partnership of driver and mechanic, but first, electric world champion, Neil Cragg. Neil Cragg, you're one of the uh, three electric world champions here at the Neo Buggy this weekend, but uh, the conversion is a bit less for you because you're, of course, an off-road champion in two-wheel drive in electric. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit easier for me. The, the on-road guides obviously find a bit harder, but basically just a bigger buggy for me. So is the technique exactly the same in there, you've got a lot more power? They're obviously not exactly the same, they're, they're obviously faster at the top end, but 
I think overall an electric car is pretty probably quicker because the acceleration is so much faster. So I'd say overall electric's faster and harder, I think. So is this the start of you branching out into uh, IC the full time? Or are you still an electric man at heart? Oh, I'm electric through and through. I just do this as a, a bit of fun. I, like, I take it serious, but you know I'll do it in, in a fun way. And if I can win, I can win. But if not, it's just something on the side, I think. And of course, it's a big year for you coming up in 2007, isn't it? Yeah, we've got the World Championships in Japan, I think they are, in August, so I've got to try and defend my title there. Is that going to be particularly difficult going into their backyard? Because they're not very good Japanese guys, aren't they? It's, it's always, wherever you go in the world, it's always there to win World Championships. You've got, obviously, the Japanese, they're brilliant drivers and they're going to be good on their track. The Americans are just awesome, so it's, it's going to be hard, but hopefully, fingers crossed, I can pull it off. Now, from your uh, results, it's, it's obvious you, you seem to have more of an edge in the two-wheel drive rather than four-wheel drive class. Why is that? I th I've no idea, <laughs> to be fair. I, just, I think m most people genuinely like two-wheel drive better. It's more, it's a harder discipline. So I think genuinely the better drivers. And it's, 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 I don't know what makes you better. It just, it just is. You know, it's more rewarding when you get it right, I think. Coming back this weekend, what's a good result for you here? Because you're just having a bit of fun. Uh, if I make the main final, that'll be that's good and that's good for me. That'll do. I could, if I won, that'd be awesome. But I think we're a long way off that at the moment. So making the main would be good. Neil, thanks very much. Thank you. Here, John. Hill. John, you're probably the best or top British driver these days. Um, on my day, I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay. Now you just returned from the world in Jakarta. How did that go? Very well. Um, we made it into the main final, which was the first objective of the meeting. Won our semi-final, uh, which was very nice to do. First time I've done that. Uh, we had a few technical issues in the final, unfortunately, so we finished tenth. But yeah, overall, very well. Was very happy with the result. Now, give us a bit of your history of RC racing. How long have you been doing uh, eighth or anything else? I think about 12 years now. Um, I had a break in between that period as well. Um, I was always relatively quick, but used to just fall apart all the time. So. Uh, I managed to con one of my friends to do the mechanicing and uh, suddenly my results got better. And that's the interesting thing really is, that's the big difference between this discipline and other radio control disciplines. You need to have a, at least a friend, often a dad, but you've gone the whole hog and got something you're totally not related to, to do all the work. Yeah, we've got an entourage going on, yeah. Uh, I inherited somebody else's family to do it for me. Um, yeah, rallycross is very much a team sport, I think more so than most of the other classes. Um, it, it's not good enough just to be on your own and fast. You do need to have people around you to, to, to succeed, basically. And your team is, is young John. John, who who I've known for about 20 years, but you know, in those days you were running around doing uh, well, uh, electric cars. So how come you stopped racing and decided to become a mechanic? Uh, I realised there were other drivers that were much better than me. Uh, I'd reached my limit and uh, John's potential was far greater. So what does it actually entail being his mechanic? I mean, do you, do, does he touch the car at all or do you just shoo him away? No, I wouldn't let him touch the car. <laughs> um, hopefully we talk and uh, get the car right and um, he goes off, watches the track, which is constantly changing, and uh, I'll sit here and, and work on the car. Now, obviously, in uh, most full-size motorsport disciplines, there's a very close relationship between the driver and the mechanic. I mean, are you both suggesting set-up set options, or is the setup all come from John's feedback? Uh, we, we talk a lot. Um, we have to communicate. It's just like a Formula One driver, like you say, needs to communicate with their team. Um, after a run, He'll tell me whether the car's got enough grip, whether it's understeering, and, and from that we'll, we'll make a few suggestions on what to change. Now, obviously, at the end of the meeting, normally we all go home with all the back of our car, but uh, I think John just drives off and you take all the muck, don't you? Yeah, yeah, he gets a limo drive and uh, I take all the car, uh, it all goes home, and uh, I clean it up and get it ready for the next time. So, like any very close team, do you argue a lot? Um, no, no. No, I, I tell him just drive it and he goes off and does it. So if he crashes and something breaks, who gets the blame? Always the driver. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's uh, fortunately the cars are very reliable. Um, we do have a good history of reliability. We've got very good sponsors who, who provide us with all the gear that we need. Um, so the, the cars are good. I mean, that's a good point about sponsorship. It means that obviously if you're going, if John's racing at a foreign meeting, you have to go, go there as well. Is it, is it the Norway? He's up in business class and you're in the, in the back? Uh, oh, fortunately, no, we go uh, with the luggage. <laughs> it's, uh, again, you know, our sponsors are very good and they allow us to go to many places. 
Back to John. John, I mean, do you think you've noticed a considerable improvement in your performance since you've had a, a full-time mechanic compared to you do it yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the raw speed's probably not any different. Um, but before, I used to be driving around worrying or waiting for something to fail or fall off, whereas now, generally, we're pretty good on that. Um, so I can concentrate on my driving more. So I think as a package, yeah, I'm faster now, definitely. So, and your, your hopes for the weekend? Um, my hopes for the weekend, well, hopefully to try and win the meeting. Um, that's everybody's hope here. As a racing driver of any category, big scale, small scale, you're, you've got to have high goals. Um, realistically, getting in the main final will be a good achievement here. There's many fast drivers from around the world. Um, and then really see what happens. It's a long final. That's another big difference with rallycross over or one eight scale over electric is the long finals. So anything can happen. You can't win it in five minutes. John and Neil both line up in the second semi-final. And here with your race commentary is John Hindhoff. These drivers then are racing for the top six positions to qualify for the final where they'll join Adam Drake and the top six from the previous semi-final. Richie Gomez, well, he's sweating because he needs to see the seventh position time of the finisher in this race. And if he's quicker, he's in the final. If not, he's on his way home. Watch for the flag to go up and we're off and racing and a pretty good start from all of the front row. A little bit of argy-bargy in the middle, but everyone's back on their wheels. Now, who's going to be the leader over this jump? It's Smolnik. Smolnik has come from grid position two to lead it. Big air and triples the last whoops. And, uh, well, that's not where you're supposed to be, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Meantime, Smolnik has got away from battle in second place. The man on pole is under pressure for second place. There's the leader going through, and he's got a good lead. John Hazelwood right up there and getting very physical with the cars around him. As the midfield comes through that chicane, there's the leader, Smolnik. Battle in second, then the battle for third and fourth. Very impressed with Smolnik, who's got a very good start, and that does take the pressure off just a little bit. Can drive his own race from here. Battle trying to close him down, the Spaniard. Not taking the aerial route there, and it does cost him time. Look at that, he's lost, what, probably five or six buggies lengths there as the leader pulls away. And Battle is just not that aggressive on the big whoops. He's catching up here, and look at the... Blast of speed, the squirt of speed as the leader's gone over. Oh, Smolnik's over, the front wheel's waggling in desperation like a fly on its back, wiggling its legs in the air. Battle goes through into the lead. Second place is John Hazelwood in the X-ray. Kragrain has gone through in third position. Smolnik well down the order at the moment. The Spaniard coming back towards us then. He's not desperately aggressive there, is he? And he's, again, just losing a little bit of time. There's the minor position. Oh, well, that was a bit more air from the leader. Hazelwood in second, looking confident. Smolnik, I think, has just about recovered into third position. Then the battle in the midfield. Graham Olsop, Ed Curry, Elliot Boots in there. Quagrain in there as well. It's the uh, better part of the top ten anyway. Oh, and there's a problem. Now, is that Quagrain that's gone over? Picked up quickly by the marshal, but that will cost him some time. Curry then with uh, Graham Olsop there, just chasing him onto the infield section as they come back towards us. They're great shots on. Then Curry gets it wrong. Olsop nips through, going down into the hairpin, and Olsop gets it wrong. Oh, now it's side by side. And who's this coming up behind him? I think that's Boots. Elliot Boots is. Oh, spinning out as well. Oh, bit of contact there. Curry recovers, so does Boots. Let Olsop get away just a little bit. Giving a little bit of breathing space. All getting a little bit tight. Remember, that's right on the edge of qualification there because we're looking down at the bottom end of the top six. Back to the leader now. This is Battle, who has had it all his own way so far. You can just see he's not pushing anywhere near as hard as he needs to, and that's why, because it's pit stop time, and he's slightly slowed down by the other car, but fortunately, he's got... The first pit stop, oh, and he's all jabbed up there in the pits. This happens in every form of racing, and RC is no different. You've got to get out of the pits cleanly. Well, he's recovered well, has the leader. That could have been disaster there. Had troubles coming in and out, and again, just broke his rhythm. Concentration is absolutely all in this, as in any other form of racing. And you just have a feeling the battle lost his for a moment. More pit stop action. Mark Reinhardt in the hot bodies car. 
world champion a few years ago in touring cars but making the switch to the dirt has managed to persuade hot bodies to bring a Japanese works mechanic over to help him with the setup and he's doing quite nicely I know well he gets caught up in someone else's accident there but recovers very quickly good to see the likes of Reinhardt and Andy Moore who was in the other semi-final coming across and supporting this event from the harder surface here's the battle for third and fourth Smolnik has another world champion the two-wheel drive electric world champion Craig right behind him and this is a great battle isn't it for the last place on the podium but remember it's the top six that go through into the final oh Craig just when we were praising him decides to put it on its roof so after that round of pit stops then Hazelwood is in a comfortable lead here's the battle for second and third Smolnik now up the second battle who led earlier on down into third and they're coming up to lap Reinhardt who is the red car just ahead of them Smolnik just coming up to that little midfield battle ah now where's battle gone battle has disappeared and lost some ground battle now dropping into the clutches of Craig who has oh, made a mistake just when he was getting into a position to be able to challenge but he's very quickly recovered to get back towards the rear wing of the Spaniard ahead of him this is the battle for third position as they come through the very technical slower part of the circuit you can almost feel the tension look at the back end of Battle's car swinging around as he gets the power on early and another little mistake there Craig hunting him down surely it can't be long before this position is takes now will Battle be aggressive over the jumps he is at least on that middle part catches the inside wall and that's given Craig a chance he actually drives over the top of the previous third place driver into the last lap for John Hazelwood showing all the style class and skill that put him as the best British finisher at the World Championships in Indonesia this x-ray buggy is handling the infield whoops just <laughs> so well now it's Smolnik in second place but he's well in fact there's Smolnik now that's not right because Smolnik's just been lapped Smolnik is hemorrhaging places the leader Hazelwood is safe and in the final but I'm very worried about, about Smolnik who was in second place he surely hasn't held on to that as the leader comes through and gets to the final let's have a look back for Smolnik no that's not him where is he there he is he's going very slowly it's making a horrible noise and well has he crossed the line only the timing screen will tell us we need to get to the results to find out whether Smolnik has managed to hold on to a top six position no doubt about Hazelwood, Tortorici second, Battle Craig and Boots coming up from 11th to 5th position. Andrew Smolnik making the final, but only just by this much. Next month's RC Racing is the last in the current series, so we finish with a flourish with a fantastic Neo Buggy A final. We also take an up-to-the-minute look at the latest developments in both chassis and motor technology in the touring car world. That's all on next month's RC Racing. www.rcracing.tv